Shalom, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please come and let's share the word of God. Please come and let's share the word of God. Very quick. Very quick. Please, as soon as you join, share the link. When you connect, do it to share the link. Let somebody hear the word of God this afternoon. It's your lady pastor. Precious. Appear gifty, or you can call me gifty appear in short. I've come your way this afternoon to share with you the word of God, and I know your soul will be happy hearing the word of God. Yes, you will be happy hearing the word of God. God bless you for joining. Yes, sexual immorality. Sexual immorality in churches today. There are so many things going on in various churches today that looks normal. But it's not normal. There are so many things that a lot of people are doing or practicing which looks like it's normal. But if you don't stand to correct what is wrong the day will come where all people will be guilty of one sin or all people will be guilty before god almighty sexual immorality now fornicating infidelity it is like it looks like normal because we have some pastors in churches today. They have wives. The ladies in the church knew that this is the pastor's wife. The lady in the churches knew that this is associate pastor's wife. Yes, though they agreed to date such a person. There are many ladies that call themselves Christians today that are in many churches today. They knew, they knew that this person is legally married. Legally married. But they feel comfortable to be in relationship with such person and still go to church. We are calling wrong good. And we are calling good evil. Let us correct what is evil. Let us speak to ourselves. Let us let our sisters and brothers know that one sin that is leading a lot of the youth, a lot of men, a lot of women to hell fire is sexual immorality. If you are watching me and you are still fornicating, you are going to hell. You are on your way to hell. If you are watching me and you are a second wife, you know that the man is legally married. Let me tell you, Christianity doesn't promote polygamy. Christianity is against polygamy. If you, if you are practicing polygamy, maybe you go to church all right, but don't count yourself as a Christian. Christianity doesn't support homosexuals. Christianity talks against homosexuals. Christianity talks against infidelity. Christianity speaks against polygamy. Christianity speaks against polyandry. So if you are here and you are practicing polygamy, or you are practicing polyandry. Stop calling yourself a child of God. Because when you die in that act. You can never make it to heaven. This message may irritate you. My brothers and sisters. If I am not able to tell you the truth. As I am alive. Or as you are alive. You will die and meet God. And God will tell you. This thing that you did. 
for the sake of this thing you did, I cannot open my gate for you to enter. Maybe you go to church, all right. You may be an usher. You may be a aquarist. Mm -hmm. You may be whatever, I don't know, whatever uh, position you occupy. I don't know how you've availed yourself to help the work of God. Maybe you are the one that buys suit for the man of God. Maybe you are the one that organizes uh, um, youth fellowship. You organize evangelism. You do a lot of things in church. Yes, so this thing that I'm talking to you about, you are practicing it. I know many people that are in the evangelism team. The men and the women, some of them are married though, but as they are going up and down, claiming their winning souls, they are knocking themselves. Claiming their winning souls, they are, they, are, they are making love to themselves. Meanwhile, in the sight of God, they are not singles. In the sight of God, they are legally married. If you avail yourself for the devil to deceive you, to practice such, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Let me read a scripture to you. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5, I want to read the whole of 1 Corinthians chapter 5 with you. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, the verse number 1 going. Paul was speaking to the church of Corinth. Hear the word of God. He said, now it is actually being said that there is sexual immorality among you, so terrible that not even the hearing would be guilty of this. It is said clearly that there is sexual immorality among you, you are practicing so many things that even those that call themselves atheists, those that call themselves non-believers will never do. Apostle Paul was warning the church. Apostle Paul was warning the church. As I'm seated here warning the church today, the church is not the building, the church is you watching me. The church is not the, 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 that, that shrine that is well decorated. The church is you. So if I talk about sexual immorality in the church, I'm talking about what we are doing in our secret places within ourselves. How we are defiling ourselves. How we are availing ourselves for the devil to use us. How we are availing ourselves for the devil to penetrate. That is what I'm talking about. He said, now it is actually being said that there is sexual immorality among you. So terrible that not even the hearing will be guilty of it. I am told that a man is sleeping with his stepmother. How then can you be proud? On the contrary, you should be filled with sadness. And the man who has done such a thing should be expelled from your fellowship. And even though I am far away from you in body, Still, I am there with you in spirit, and as though I were there with you, I have in the name of the Lord. Jesus already passed judgment on the man who has done this terrible thing. As the spirit, he said, as you meet together and I meet with you in my spirit, by the power of our Lord Jesus present with us, you were to hand this man over to Satan for his body to be destroyed so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. I continue from the verse number 6. I said I want to read 1 Corinthians chapter 5. The whole scripture. Please open your ears and listen to me. Verse 6. It says, it is not right for you to be proud. You know the saying, a little bit of yeast makes the whole batch of dough rise. You must remove the old yeast of sin so that you will be entirely pure. Then you will be like a new batch of dough without any yeast. As indeed, I know you actually are, for our Passover festival is ready. Now that Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed, let us celebrate our Passover then, not with blood, having the old yeast of sin and wickedness, but with the bread that has no yeast, 
the bread of purity and truth. In the letter that I wrote you, I told you not to associate with immoral people. Now, I do not mean pagans who are immoral or greedy or artists or who worship idols. To avoid them, you would have to go, you have to get out of the world completely. What I meant was that you should not associate with a person who calls himself a believer that is immoral or greedy or worships idols or is a slanderer or a drunkard or a thief. Don't even sit down to eat with such a person. After all, it is none of my business to judge outsiders. God will judge them, but should you not judge the members of your own fellowship? As the scripture says, remove the evil person from your group. Here is the word of God. The whole of First Corinthians chapter 5, Apostle Paul was addressing one issue, one problem that I, I am sitting here to address, sexual immorality. My sister, don't say my pastor have not seen me. Or my pastor know I go out with this man. Or my pastor know I go out with this guy. Don't say, oh, my church leader even knows that I'm, 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 I'm planning to settle down with this lady. If you are planning to settle down with the lady, you have not married her. If you are planning to settle down with somebody, you are not yet married. So whatever you and that person is doing is against the will of God. Gone are the days. When you are in church and you fornicate and they grab you, they will expel you. In Ghanaian language, you see, you are true saying. They will expel you. But because nowadays there are so many churches, they will expel a person from the church of Pentecost and the person will decide that no, I will not sit at the back of the, of the, of the church. Or I will not sit at the back of the congregation. I will relocate. I will, I will find a new church and attend. It is not a new thing. No. If you have once been expelled, it is scripturalized. When you are being expelled, you, you know, your soul is what you are seeking to save. Because when they expel you, it's a sign that they are rebuking you. They are chastising you. They are putting you at the right place. You have sinned. So they have to punish your flesh so that your soul will be saved. Oh yes. A lot of you, you've been expelled from Anglican church. You've been expelled from uh, Presbyterian church. Now you are in mountain of fire with long gone. Yes, so behind the scene, you are chopping the ladies. Nyafu, nyafu. You have not repented. But if you remain in Anglican or Presbyterian or Methodist or Pentecost where they expelled you, like your soul will be, will be saved. Oh yes. There are a lot of things that we have stopped doing in churches. Gone are the days. If you are a young lady and you give birth out of wedlock, the scripture says we should expel you. Your child is not supposed to be blessed. Oh yes. Because in the sight of God, bastards are not to appear in the congregation. According to the law that God gave to Moses and Aaron to give to the Israelites, when they give birth, when you give birth out of wedlock, when you give birth to a bastard, that child is not supposed to appear when children of Israel meet, when there is a gathering. Every bastard must be at the back of the tent. So you shouldn't be jubilating that you've given birth to bastards. You've given birth to four, five children. None of them, none of the men did the necessary. None of them paid your dowry. None of them married you. None of them, none of your children in the sight of God have father. That is the meaning. Of when you give birth out of wedlock in the sight of God, your child is fatherless. That is the meaning. Your child do not have a father. That is why in some tribes in Ghana here, listen to me. I'm telling you, those tribes, you may think they are this, they are this. They, their law is too much. It's not law. It is biblical rules. 
Some tribes over here in Ghana, let me tell you, those people that will meet a lady outside and they think I can date you for you to be my baby mama, you give birth to the child, they will not give the child to you. You impregnated the lady all right, unless you come and see the family and do the necessary. That child will never bear your name. There are some tribes in Ghana here, they obey, they believe that when you give birth out of wedlock, the child is fatherless. So you that is having children with, you have different baby fathers. Oh, this is Michael's father. This is Gloria's father. This is Anna's father. This is my, 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 my fiancé, my baby daddy. This is my baby mommy. Stop all this shit. Stop it. This is what is leading a lot of souls to hell. Now many pastors have baby mamas. Not that they've married and maybe their marriage couldn't, stop, uh, couldn't survive. Mm -hmm. Not because they've married and their marriage couldn't stand the test of time. They, they were fornicating and they gave birth out of wedlock. If you give birth out of wedlock and you die in that thing, my dear, you will go to hell. Let me tell you the truth. You will go to hell. You and a lesbian, you and a gay, you and whatever they call themselves, you are the same. You are the same. So don't be hiding behind the scene in churches and fornicate. Don't be hiding and seeing other people's husband. Please stay away from people's husband. Let it be the word that will be on your heart. Even if you get your own and that man is so, sorry to say a cripple, that man is sorry to say a blind, it is better than going in for somebody's husband. Never go in for somebody's husband. Never even last for somebody's husband. You know the man is married. Yes, though. You are going to Juju. You are going to Sangoma. You are, you are going so many places. You want the man to leave the wife and come and marry you. My dear. It is against the will of God. It is against the will of God. This is what is taught preaching in churches. So you see people confidently coming to the altar with boldness with boldness no sense of remorse with boldness coming to receive blessing from God you see people praying to God in an aggressive way sweating meanwhile they will sweat finish and go and pursue people's husband they will sweat finish in praying sweating sweating after they finish sweating they go and fornicate if you are doing it if you are still in it my sister I came to warn you walk out of it The season and the time that we used to do all this, it is gone. Time is not on our side. The young are dying. Grown-ups are dying. Sister, walk out of your mess. Don't die in your sins. Don't die as a fornicator. Hear the word of God. Don't let any man deceive you. Says it sweet. I mean, it is sweet. The sweetest thing that God created that we don't cook. We don't bake. We don't grill. We don't toast. It's sex. It's sexual intercourse. It is sweet. But please, don't go in for it. When you are not legally married. Don't go in for it. When you are not legally married. Sex making is for married people. Apart from you being married, do not practice such a thing. You are defiling yourself. You are staining your spiritual garment. You are, you are taking out the power of God out of you. And you are opening the door for weakness to enter you. A lot of men of God, now they are no longer men of God in the sight of God. A lot of women that had a calling of God because of sexual intercourse, their power has been taken away from them. You know me, I don't just wake up and begin to deliver a message. I don't just wake up and deliver a message. I deliver messages based on revelations that God gives me. I deliver messages based on things that people are doing. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You yourself, if you are spiritually sensitive, if you are so sensitive, and you can discern or you can dream, you know that the garment that is covering you now is dirty. You know that the crowd on you is dirty. You know that the, the, the shirt that you are wearing, the, the, the long dress you are wearing now, it is no longer white. It is stained. It is so dirty. Because of sexual immorality. 
you are addicted to masturbation. You masturbate three, four times a day before you go to bed. So every day you are looking for a lady on the media. You are looking for somebody to lose so that that person will be showing you the breast, showing you the private part, so that you used to get your, 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 your orgasms. It is all sins. I came to warn you. Abstain from all these things. I came to warn you. Walk out of these things. It is no good. It is no good at all. It will take you to hell. It will take you to hell. You, 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 you are addicted to sleeping with animals. You are addicted to uh, 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 knocking your own dog, your dog, your pets. Because you can't control your lust. You will land in hellfire. If you die today in that act, if you don't rise up and, and cringe yourself in the blood of Jesus, if you don't repent, this thing is taking you to hell. This thing is taking you to hell. I came to warn you about sins that is pulling a lot, multitude. It is pulling multitude to hell, both the young and the old. Now you see an old man, somebody old enough to be my daddy's age. At this age, this is not the age that we used to fornicate to. When you cross 60, you are heading towards your, you are left it 10 years. Those are clock 70. You are left it 10 years. Those are clock 80. You are left it 20 years to log out of this world. You sing from your childhood. Use this 20 years. Use this 10 years. Use this 5 years to make corrections. Correct your ways. The mistakes that you did in your youth, the mistakes that you did, the numerous ladies that you brought upon your life, the numerous ladies that you defile them with, you defile yourself with, this is the time that you have to sit and say, God, please cleanse me. God, please wash me. God, please, I do not want to die as a sinner. I do not want to die with all these things on me. I do not want to die with all these things on me. Lord, cleanse me and prepare a better place for my soul. This is the time that you have to work on your salvation. But this is the time that you see old men jumping over teenagers. Somebody old enough to be their daughter. You see the person be calling them baby. Are you a baby? At your age. Daddy, I, at your age. Are you a baby? Are you a baby? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Your daughter's age calling you baby. Somebody that you can give birth to. Because your eye is blind spiritually. Because you have eye and you cannot see. You have ears and you cannot hear the voice of God. So your daughter's age group is seeing your nakedness. Somebody old enough to be your daughter is seeing your nakedness. Calling you daddy or calling you baby. Some of them even call you babe and you are happy. You, are you a babe? Are you babe? Repent daddy. Repent. Don't die and go to hell. That is a privilege for God has given you privilege. Repent and make to heaven. Align your ways to the ways of God. Stop doing all this. And stop sneaking from your rooms to your, your maid room. Stop sneaking from your rooms to your, 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 your cleanest room. All this will not help. Control yourself. Control you. Respect yourself. I love men that have self-control and self-respect. I hate men that do not have self-control. Anything in scared they want to try and see. Anything in scared they want to taste it. Whether it is stinking, whether it is smelling good, whether it is big, whether it is small. Anything in scared, as far as the thing is hiding in scared, they want to chop it. Men that, that do not have self-control, I hate them. I don't like it. I don't like them at all. I don't like their aura at all. Respect yourself as a man. Respect your wife. Don't go in for somebody that will come and speak a word that your wife can never get it out of their heart. Your wife can never get that word out of her heart. Because, you know, I sit and hear, most of the time, I use myself as an example because God allows me to go through a lot of pain in order to get a message to speak to you. 
when my ex-husband got married, if my ex-husband got married to somebody older than me, somebody above me, it will never pain me. But my maid sister, you did not respect me. You did not show me the maximum respect that I needed from you as a husband. The same thing a lot of you, you lose respect in the sight of your wife. The day you slept with your mate, the day you went to the same bed with your nanny, you lose respect from your wife. And God is not happy. That thing is written. Do your possible best to delay that thing. Delete it. Delete it. You can erase it. You can delete it. You can pray the blood of Jesus over every sin that you have committed. And God will forgive you. Ephesians. Let's go. Open your Bible to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Please, when you join, when you log in, share the link for me. Share on your timeline. Let somebody hear the word of God. Help me evangelize. I'm not the only evangelist here. You are all joining me to evangelize. Yes. It says, since. Oh, come on, Let me tell you. Just a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5. Let's go. Let's go. Living in the light. From today, we will be studying the word of God because the children are back to school. No noise in the house. We will be studying the word of God. I want it this way so that you help me. We all learn the word of God. Ephesians chapter 5. So please open your Bible and go to Ephesians chapter 5. It says, Since you are God's dear children, you must try to be like him. Heal. Because you are a dear child to God, you must try your possible best to be like God. Since you are God's dear children. Yes, let's, let's go. Since you are God's dear children, you must try to be like him. Your life must be controlled by love, just as Christ loved us and gave his life for us. Verse number two, as a sweet smelling offering and sacrifice that pleases God. Since you are God's people, it is not right that any matters of sexual immorality or indecency or greed should even be mentioned among you. You see, the Bible spoke it in several ways. I don't know why most churches have ignored. They don't emphasize. We must emphasize and explain deep. Go deep for ushers that are dating each other to know that it's against God. We must go deep for pastors that have wives, that have side chicks in the same ministry, that there are certain confusion between women and women in the same church to know that this is against the will of God. Oh yes, we must tell the ordinary church member, we must tell them this is against the will of God. We must tell that young man that is coming to church because he has seen a beautiful flower there that want to trap that lady and put her on bed. We must tell that young man that you cannot be with that woman on bed unless you do the necessary. We must tell associate pastors that you that we gifting you car. We giving you, we renting a place for you. That's not me. We are promoting you to a level of sexual promiscuity. No. We are not promoting you to that level. We are helping you because we want you to be able to praise God. As dear children, this is against God. As dear children. I know a lot of you, you fornicated and have five children. Yes, so the man is not ready to make you whole. Leave that relationship. Leave. It's better you die as a lady without any man in your life, 
rather than dying with your sin partner. Hear me, I repeat. It is better you die as a young lady or an old woman, as a single old woman, that you don't have any man in your life. Rather than dying in a wrong relationship, dying in a rightful relationship, that is the right word. Because a rightful relationship is the one that no necessary due has been done. It has not passed through the rightful way of acquiring a woman. You cannot enter my house and take my daughter free of charge. I will shoot you. Oh, yes. You cannot cheat. <laughs> I'm not a fool. For me to raise a child, you also, you the lady also, set a standard for yourself. You are not fool. As I'm seated here, a man cannot say I will not pay your due and every day I will remove my pants and open my leg for him. I'm not a fool. I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid. Knowing that that thing that I'm doing can land me in hell. Knowing that that thing I'm doing can take away my glory. Knowing that that thing I'm doing, I can be cheated. The Lord cannot even fight for me. When the man decides I'm dumping you today, I'm not going to give you anything. No law will speak for you. No law in the country will speak for you. Over here in Ghana, if you allow yourself for a man to use you, he has used you free of charge. No law will call, no law will bind the man and say, we are dividing your property and giving half to them. No. All the ladies that you see them filing for divorce, they are filing for divorce because they knew they have legal access to one third or one quarter of what the man owns. You. That they've turned you to be a baby producing machine. I come to provoke you so my words will be harsh on you today. Because I want you to go and leave that man that have no plan for you. That man that do not want you to land well in paradise. That man that has been an obstacle, a stumbling block to your salvation. That lady that is a stumbling block to your salvation. I want you to go and cut ties with that person for your salvation sake. For the sake of your salvation. Cut ties with some guys. Cut ties with some ladies. Tell them I cannot fornicate. I can't remain it. I can't continue. I know the devil give you excuse why the guy is not paying the deal. I know the devil sounds sweet excuse in your ears. Or the guy is not, he's not financially stable. When he gets money, he's going to do the necessary. He will get money and dump you because you're a fool. You, are, you agree that the guy don't have money. The guy will get money and you are not the rightful person to wed. Oh, yes. A lot of you are living in sin because you are sympathizing. I'm sympathizing with the guy. The guy don't have money. You know, the guy is not, the, the guy is not what to do. But I love him. Yeah, you love him. Wait. I know you love him. Wait. If not that you are sinning with that guy, like God can make a way for that guy, to get money to come and do the necessary. But because you are sinning, the presence of God has left both of you. So you pray, but God do not answer. That is why doors are not opening for that guy to come and do the necessary. Mr. Man, you are trying your best to go and do the necessary for that lady. If you don't do the necessary, if you don't separate with her, you will never get money to go and do the necessary. You will die in sins. Let me tell you. Many of you that think so, let me give myself to the guy. The guy will get money and later he will pay my bride price. He will go and see my father. He will go and see my family. That guy will not get money to go and see your family. Today and tomorrow you die in it. Let me tell you the truth. Have self-control. Control your feelings. Tell the guy, let's go on and let's wait upon the Lord. God will make a way for us to be perfect. God will make a way for us to get money to do the necessary. I don't want us to be defiling ourselves. I want us to do it in the right way. Let's wait. Control yourself. You helping the guy to control them. So stop removing your breasts. Stop showing your breasts. Stop wearing skimpy dresses, seducive, seductive dresses that will put the man on, that will roll the man on. A lot of you women, you are the one that will roll the man on. 
If you dress decent, all the time you are dressed decent. I know some men have feeling they can't control themselves. But if you don't push them to the wall, they will not go to the stand of you netting into their buster shorts. They will not do it. How many of them that you see them in the street, urinating? Don't they see beautiful women in the street? How many of them? Do you see them wetting their buster shorts? They don't wet. But you, how you seduce, how you smile, how you talk, you seducing him to fall. We will not let him pay your bride pride. Though. Like people will not give birth with a man. They will have four children with the man. And the man will say, this is not the woman I love. I have found the one I love. You may think he's insane. He's not insane. Stop seducing him. Stop seducing them. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it at all. Stop it. Don't even go close to him. Don't go close to him. If you are getting married, if you are planning to get married, and we do, we want to avoid all this. We cannot be in the same room. You know, fire and kerosene cannot meet. Fire and kerosene cannot meet. You cannot be mingling, cuddling, and say, oh, you know, have sex. You have it. You cannot cuddle. You are not supposed to cuddle. You are not supposed to hug. Hug. There is a feeling in hugging. When you hug the guy, when you hug the lady, you feel for the lady. As soon as you hug, you see the banana rising. You see something is moving underground there. Something is moving. Don't let that thing move. Don't let it rise. Don't let it rise. Help them. Help them. We are all fighting for eternity. We are all trying our possible best. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect. I'm not claiming myself being perfect than you that is in it. I'm just helping you to come out. And somebody that helped me, somebody that, that preached the word of God, somebody that supported me in prayer for me to become perfect, and now I'm also supporting you to come out of it. To come out of it. Please, wait for the right time. Young ladies, 15, 16, you know, says, 15, 16, some of you know different kinds of styles that even your mothers do not know. At age 16, you know Caesars, you know missionary, you know this, you know that, you know dog, you know this. At your age, how did you manage to know? How can you grow and become a better person? At your age, you know different, different styles. How did you even get to know? How, who told you? Who taught you? The person that is teaching you those things. If you have not practiced to know, the person teaching you is your worst enemy. I'm telling you, young girl, that person is your worst enemy. That person is not for your good. That person doesn't want a better future for you. Because at age 15, no man will impregnate you and marry you. They will force the man on you. They will force the man. They will force you on the man. It is the family that will force you on the man to marry you. Because he has impregnated you. But at 30, 35, that man will dump you. Because he's fed up with you. He made a choice out of ignorance. He wasn't matured. Either you, either you dump him or he dumps you. Because at that age, you are not matured. You don't know anything about marriage. You don't know anything about what you like and what you do not like. It is your lust that moves you in. It is because you couldn't control yourself. And you got pregnant and they used pregnancy to trap the man. And say, because you've impregnated her, you have to marry her. Wake up. Wake up. I thank God for not giving birth out of wedlock. It may be a shame upon my life at now. I bless God for securing me. I bless God. So now that you've not made that mistake, please wake up. Don't make it. Even if the man marries you, have children with you and later dumps you, your children are not bastard. For Christ's sake, we must tell you the truth. You know, sometimes people have already made mistakes. I always say, we already making mistakes doesn't mean we should cover up what is wrong. We must voice it out so that those that are coming will not repeat it. Those that are not coming, those young ones coming, they will not repeat it. Giving birth out of wedlock is against Christianity. It's against rules and regulations. It's against the word of God. And I must tell you as it is. Don't tell me I'm privileged that I didn't give birth out of wedlock. Maybe you, you gave birth out of wedlock. Now you've gotten a husband. 
Me, I didn't give birth out of wedlock. I, have, I don't have a husband. So one way or the other, you are above me. I'm not above you. Nobody is above each other. I'm just correcting error in the body of Christ. I'm correcting errors. Errors that you made that you have to rise and tell your daughter, I don't want any of you to, to tread on the path that I tread on. Tell your son, son, I knew I had multiple children with multiple women, but I do not want you to walk on that way. I want you to settle down with one woman. I want you, I want one woman to carry all your children. This is the reasonable advice a father, a polygamous father can give to a son. Not tell him, son, oh, women are sweet. Choose the one you like. The one that will do this, do this, just ignore and go for another one. That is not a good advice. I hope a lot of you have regretted choosing that, that path. Choosing to have different, different children with different women. You see how some of the children are really stressing you. You see how they are stressing you. You see how they are making your, your days so better. If you could have had with one woman, it could be better. I'm not <laughs> condemning other religions that they practice. They themselves, they know it's not good for them. Other religious bodies, other religions that practice it, they know it is not good. This morning, I was talking to Mama about a man and his polygamous wives. How the children are really struggling. How the children are struggling. We have to eat and give leftover to them. If you could have been with one woman with six children, you could have found ways and means for providing for the children. Because I've seen a man that is having eight children, nine children, ten children, with one woman, they are making. If you have your money and you can practice whatever you practice is between you and God. But poor people, that the first wife children are even finding it difficult to go to school. They wake up and they'll be walking around the streets half naked. Some of them even no pants, no pants to wear, no dress to wear. You see them naked going around. This is not good. This is not good. This is not good. Children have nothing to eat and the father is busy marrying another wife, giving birth with new wife. Why the one that you've already have, you cannot even cater for them. This is not good in the sight of God. And I don't think the God I know will accept this and say to you, come to paradise. He's not a fool. God is not a fool. Because every child that we brought on, we are going to account for the life of that child. Every child that we bring on this earth, there is an accountability. A day will come, we will stand before God and answer questions on those children. Why is it that you were not able to bring the child up in a godly way? Why is it that you were not able to provide for that child? And that child is, or that child tends to be an arm robber. Why is it that you were not able to give to that child the necessary deal for the child to become this? God will ask us one day. God is going to ask you one day. Yes. There are a lot of ladies that are married to men that have baby mamas. Baby mamas are not living in peace at all. From one problem to the other. Don't tell me it is good. Don't tell me. You are hurting the emotion of another woman. And you are telling me it's good. I can cater for them. You care about only yourself. You care about only your feeling. You don't care about the feeling of the wife, the woman you've married. You don't care. That is what is leading a lot of you to hell. It is leading a lot of you to hell. Please. Please. I am speaking to you as a, a, a mouthpiece of God, a messenger of Christ, speaking to you this morning, this afternoon. It says, since you are God's people, it is not right that any matters of sexual immorality or indecency, sexual indecency. You know, this is my best friend, your wife's best friend. You end up in bed with her. Your wife's junior sister, 
you end up in bed with her. Your husband's junior brother, you end up in bed with him. Your husband's best friend, you end up in bed with him. It's against God. Sexual indecency. This is what you call sexual indecency. Sexual immorality. It's no good at all. It's no good at all. I came home with my best friend to sow hi to my husband. And the next moment you've collected her number. The next moment you are on a hotel bed with her. Sexual indecency. Let us stop practicing it. As children of God, this is not good at all. This is not good at all. Two men with one woman. This is not good at all. Sexual indecency. It is not good at all. Two ladies with one man. Threesome. Threesome relationship. Hey, don't tell me it is sweet. The devil will make you sweet in your sight. Hey, open the gate for them. Open the gate. Open it. Uh -huh. Open. Afternoon, welcome. Why are you sick? Come and let me see. Afternoon. Come and let me touch you. Mm, you are not feeling hot. Go and bath and come and take me. Yes. Let's fish out what is wrong, what is evil. Trace some. Oh, today, me and my wife, we, have to, we, we want to practice trace some. Hey. Hey. Abomination, we call it normal. Sexual indecency. Filthiness. Filthiness. One man in between two women on the same bed. You enjoy this one, finish, and you turn and enjoy this one. Transfer of demons. Transfer of evil spirits. Mm. Mm. I, I can't pick up. Mm. I'll call you as soon as I finish. Sexual indecency, filthiness. Two men on the same bed with one lady in their middle. Everybody's enjoying that lady. Where did we land? How, how did we even land in this? How? And we call this normal. And people do this in their secret rooms and come and lift their hands before God. We worship you, Lord. Holy is your name. Holy is your name. Meanwhile, your hands is not clean. The hand that you are lifting. First Timothy. Say so we should lift a pure hand. 2 verse 8. 1 Timothy 2, 8. Before we go to God, before we, we appear before God, make sure our hands are clean. You do all this. Sexual indecency. Many of you have married wife. Mommy, be, be a number by two months. 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 Yeah. Some of you, some of you, Yes, yeah, some of you, what you're doing, you know, you may think God is so silent, God have not strike you with tender, God have not killed you, so God is pleased. God is not pleased at all. Don't let anybody tell you, as far as God reigns and you enjoy the rain, as far as God will, will, will open the sky and the sun will be shining and we all mm -hmm. see the sun means God is pleased with what you are doing. No. Many of you have married wives. The right way, entry way. You say, I don't like the entry. I want to penetrate through exit. Indecency. Sexual indecency. God is against it. If you're a married woman here and your husband doesn't want the right way and he wants to penetrate through, through the exit, your anus, leave that marriage for your salvation's sake. Hey, call me whatever name you want to call me. I will tell the truth. If you like, kill me. I will tell the truth. If your husband says, I do not want the right way. I want to go through the exit. Your anus, tell your husband, I'm sorry. I'm a child of God. I love you, dear, but I will never give myself up. This man that will come and wear you, huge wedding, 
paying huge amount of money and go and practice this, my sister. The huge amount of money they spent on your family, spent on the wedding, they've used to buy your soul. They are going to destroy you. You will die and go to hell. They have just given you maybe five years. They've given you ten years. You start rotting. You will start rotting. Water will be coming from your anus. Water will be coming from your womanhood. They will run away from you. They will leave you in hospitals. They will never attend to you. Free from such people. Free from such acts. I'm telling you the mind of God. I'm telling you the mind of God. It's not easy for these messages to preach in churches. That is why God wants me to use this medium to tell you. Free. Free. If you're a man... And you are into such, your soul do not have a perfect place to live after death. If you are a man and you are interested in chopping the annals of fellow, women, fellow men, or even chopping the annals of women, you will go to hell. Because when God created human being, when God created woman, God is wise. You, you that man, you are not wiser than God. You, that man, you cannot say you are wiser than God. And you are not the one to tell God that, God, I don't like the right way you created. I want the exit. Where she shit through or where she, she, waits, she, she released through. I don't want that way. I want to destroy that place. No. Please. Please. Do your possible best to live for God. Whatever you are doing, let salvation come in your mind. Make sure your instinct and your conscience is so clean. Nothing is judging you. Make sure nothing, nothing. Don't let anything judge you. Don't let it. Don't give yourself access. Don't allow the devil to have access on you. Because when the devil has access on you, you go to hell. You will end up in hell. You end up in hell. For your salvation's sake. Try your best, oh. You see how people are dying. You see how people are dying. You see how people are dying. Let me read a scripture to you so that you understand the season and the era that we are in. The era that we are in. I don't want that era to skip you. I don't want I don't want you to be ignorant to the season and the time that we are in. Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. Let me read there for you. Revelation chapter 6. It said, Then I saw the lamb break open the first of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice that sounded like tender, Come. I looked, and there was a white horse. Its rider held a bow. And he was given a crown. He rode out as a conqueror to conquer. Then the lamb broke open the second seal, and I heard the second living creature say, Come, another horse come out, a red horse. Each rider was given the power to bring war on the earth, so that people should kill each other. He was given a large sword. I want to repeat that area again. And let, when I finish repeating this area, I will show you the era that we are in. I will show you the era that we are in. Revelation chapter 6 verse 4. It said, another horse came out, a red horse. Its rider was given the power to bring war on the earth so that people should kill each other. He has given a large sword. <laughs> people should kill each other. So now you hear them for husband shooting a wife. Wife poisoning a husband. Husband murdering a wife. Wife killing a husband. This killing this, this killing this. The horse is moving around. The horse is moving around. The horse is moving around. You see side check stabbing <laughs> fiancé in a hotel room, somebody's husband. The horse is moving around. The red horse that is sent with the sword in hand to scatter, to kill. You don't know when your time will be due. You don't know when it will reach you. You don't know your expiry date on earth. Please arise and work on your salvation. Work on your salvation enough. You've done enough. 
Maybe you are here watching me. You've been you've been having you've been you've been having you've been joining a lot of these uh, dating sites where you can see a lot of filthy things. A lot of it. That is where you are. I cannot even explain. Most of the dating sites, eh? When you when you upload search up app, when that app is on your phone and you dare open that app, it is there you see sizes of manhood. It is there you see sizes of women breasts. It is there you see that the womanhood is not no longer covered. It is so wildly open, naked, free, 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 as if they are making don't call me, oh, don't call me, don't call me, oh, don't call me, with a bell on it. Everybody come and see, everybody come and see. Cheap, oh, cheap, cheap, oh, cheap, cheap. You could, you could see cheap women, cheap ladies, cheap men, cheap men on those apps. These are the people in mosques. They are the people in churches. They are the people that are making noise. Allah walk valley. They are the ones. They are the ones say ra 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 in churches every day. Judgment is waiting for you. The judgment of God. <laughs> you can't run. You cannot run. Don't tell me I'm a Muslim. So I don't need this message. You need it. Stop polygamy. Stop it. And get your peace of mind. You see, a lot of you are dying premature because of polygamy. You see how the women are stressing you. You want to deal with women. You don't fear women. Three women. Every day. I, 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 I will divorce you. Uh -uh. The, only, the only thing you can use to threaten them is I will divorce you. If you don't give me peace, I will not give you upkeeping money. What of, if the women start working? If they start working, what are you using to threaten? What will you use to threaten them? What will you use to threaten them? That is what we are putting. We are, we are raising women. Women to be entrepreneurs. We are raising women to be leaders. We are raising women to, to, to be on themselves, not to depend on any man. So the any man cannot, cannot, cannot play any nonsense game. You can't play any nonsense game on me. If you are married to me and wake up and say, I'm getting married to another woman, and I say, No, you can go your way. It's either you pack your things and go. It's not pride, though. it's not arrogance. Not that I'm, I, I, I'm not submissive, but I hate nonsense. I hate nonsense. Stop it and have your peace of mind. Focus on one woman. One woman is enough. It's enough. It's because you people cannot control your, your, your sexual zeal. You cannot control your affection. That is why you are jumping from one woman to the other. And you use religion as a yastic to pray around women, choke with the heart of women. Tell me if your first wives are happy. And I'll prove to you a polygamous family that are in tears. Tell me they are happy. Tell me. Tell me you are able to love them in the sight of God. Dear heaven and earth, lift your eye before God and tell God both of the three ladies, the three ladies that I have, all of them are happy. All of them are happy. None of them is being cheated upon. All are happy. When I give this pen, I give the same to all the ladies. Tell me before heaven and earth. Are you able to do that? Yes, so. You are the one that will be going around condemning people that are doing their wedding, having their celebration. Hey, you go to hell. You go to hell. Hey, you go to hell. Allah hate this. Allah hate that. You think Allah is happy with what you people are doing? You think he's happy? It's not about washing your nose, washing your ears, wash your heart. It's not about washing your ear, washing your ear, praying, you know. Mm -mm. Cleanse your heart. Wash your heart. Sexual immorality. Wash your heart. Cleanse yourself. Live for God. Live for God. You see how people are dying. Dying mysteriously. Dying mysteriously. You see how the homes of many polygamous backgrounds are being torn down. After the death of the man. The day you die, the day you regret having such a family. The day you die. That day that you regret, mm. it is children from one, one family, three, mm. I'm sorry. Children from one, 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 one mother, one father. After the death of their parents, see the destruction, see damages. On sharing property, property, see how, see how it happens. See how it happens. You may tell me I will do a will, do a will, do well. You don't know when you will die. Not all your properties that you can do a will, not all of them. Because on daily basis, we keep acquiring new property. 
And you do not know when you will die. Maybe you start this project, you know it will be finished. You start three projects, you not finish. And those are complete projects is what to scatter your family. We saw one recently on the, uh, on the media. Families, the man is severely sick. Business tycoon here in Ghana. Severely sick at the hospital. And the, and the wives are fighting over property. They are fighting over property. They don't even care about the health of the man. If you are supposed to be with that one woman, that woman and the children will hold you up. Me, my father had 10 children with my mom. We are siblings of 10 when we separate twins. We are siblings of 10. Now we are left with eight, three girls, five boys. Three girls, five boys. Don't tell me I, 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 I'm into polygamous relationship because I want to have multiple children. Eh, one woman can give birth to 15. There is a lady in our village. She has given birth to 14. She's still pregnant. If you can cater for 14 children, one woman can have them for you. One woman can have it. It's because you are not able to control your zeal. You are not able to control yourself. You like jumping from one woman to the other. Everything is scared. Your wife best friend go around and marry her and say, Allah say, I can marry for. Ashawo. Ashawo who? Who? Olosho. You can't do anything. I tell you as it is. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> let me cool down. So I'm going higher, higher, higher. <laughs> let me calm down. Let me calm down. Ephesians says, verse 3 it says, Since you are God's people, it is not right that any matters of sexual immorality or indecency or greed should even be mentioned among you. Child of God. Daughter of Zion, daughter of Zion, praise the Lord, hallelujah! Praise the Lord, hallelujah! You know, the pastor is married. You sleep in a hotel bed with that pastor. Are you a child of God, child of Lucifer? Are you a child of God, child of Satan? You know, the pastor is married, though the man is married. You know, the wife, you know it. You know that this is our, 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 our pastor's wife. Yes, though. You go, you go, you go. You go and open your leg. You go and open your leg. When you feel it's brain tones, let God strike your mouth with tender. Let God strike your mouth with tender. These are the people that disturb us in churches with tongues. Let God scatter your mouth. The mouth that you are using to blow tongues. Go and repent. Go and repent. Tomorrow may be too late. This is the time. Tomorrow may be too late. Don't joke around. Don't joke. Salvation is personal. When the men of God later, when they realize that, oh, I'm a man of God and I'm not supposed to do this. And they decide to walk away. You take them to radio stations to disgrace them. God will destroy you. God will not forgive you. All of you that are going around sleeping with men of God, even if the man of God is blind, you are a daughter of God. You are not blind. You have eyes. You can see. Tell that man of God, I will not give myself to you because I'm a child of God. I don't want to be a stumbling block to your calling. I don't want to be a stumbling block to your salvation. You are my father in Christ. Please take me as a daughter. Please, we cannot do this. If you want it, tell mommy. Mommy will give to you. Let mommy give to you. Daddy, mommy has everything that I have as a child of God. This is how you have to approach that man of God. For this, you will not do that, oh. You will secretly be hiding. The man of God will be going for conferences. You go with him. You satisfy him in a hotel room. Before that man of God will go and stand on the pulpit and, 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 and portray his acrobatic display. His sinful acrobatic display. Because you've already given him 10 rounds that night. Then the next morning, it's like the anointing is working. It's not God's anointing, no man of God. 
it is the devil using you on that puppet. If that puppet is godly, as soon as you stand on that puppet, you start having a conviction in your mind. You have conviction in your mind. You will not go and, and enjoy celebrating your sin. You go and preach and come home. In the evening and come and fornicate. Your wife is in Kenya. You told your wife you are going on. You got an invitation to uh, uh, Australia uh, to tour Europe. And you are going with your usher. Meanwhile, your usher is your side chick. You are going with your side chick. I know some of you, let me tell you the truth. The revelations that you see concerning most of the men of God, the important things. Things that they import to come and scam you in churches. The revelations that you see concerning them, it is 100% true. It is God revealing that hidden secret of that man of God to you. It is God exposing that, that person, the wolf in a sheep clothing. Somebody that is a sinner that is claiming a winning soul. I cannot be in sin and win soul. I will have a conviction. We have all been there before. Sometimes you feel like, oh, let me just sin. Let me just ignore all, all sin, sin. You feel that conviction, strong conviction in your heart. And the church members will start dreaming and they will call you and tell you. They will call you and tell you, it is God that is speaking through them to warn you. Because that time you were sleeping, you are slumbering to wake up from your slumber. God wants you to wake up from your slumber. Sexual immorality, sexual sins is taking a lot of people to hell. It is taking away a lot of people's mantles. It is taking away a lot of people's anointing. People are becoming powerless because of sin. It's one thing that the devil knows. The devil used to trap you. I brought one guy. That guy is so anointed. I mean, a lot of you that are used to join the morning devotion, you hear that, that voice that was doing the worship. That guy carries mega anointing there is a lady that has cried to this guy and that, that guy have just run away from my house I just moved from my house now he's walking in uh, and trying going around up and down with that lady such an anointing sexual sins have tracked it down sexual sins have put in it in, 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 in a cage a cage Many of you, you are not able to rise. Your ministry is not growing. You are not moving to the next level because of sexual sins. You may think, oh, let me just enjoy. You cannot enjoy and go. You can't enjoy sins and go. You can't enjoy sins and go scot free. Anytime you, I say, the other thing I was telling you, anytime you are making sex, you are making sense. You are releasing something. Either you are releasing your potential. As you are going up and down. Man, it is not only feeling so. Your potential. You are releasing something. It says it's ordinarily says. Like babies will not come out of it. Like kings will not come through it. Like president will not come through it. Like fetish priest will not come through it. Like an archbishop will not come as a result of just twisting your waist. Many of you will be having sex in your office. In your office, see the position where God has placed you. That position that you are occupying, you do not got it because you, you, you have a degree. There are a lot of people with better qualification, more than what you carry. They are jobless. It is God that has placed you on that mega seat. It is God that has taken you to that place. God wants you to go and fulfill destiny. Now you are sleeping with girls on your office tables. Your office table has turned to be a harrowed room. A room for prostitution, a room for sleeping with ladies. This lady is coming and go, coming and go, coming and go, coming and go. Every day, a different lady will come and look for boss. As soon as God promoted, it is now that you know that oh, I have to increase the woman, the kind, the woman around me. I need a, a, a fair lady. I need a lady that will satisfy me in the afternoon. I need the one that will satisfy me when I cross from work before I go and see my wife. When you were nobody, did you thought of that? Now God has promoted you. God has taken you to the next level. And now you think of that. God will bring you down if you don't repent. God will bring you down if you don't repent. God is calling you to repent. God is knocking at the heart of your door. With this message, let this message touch your heart. Let it touch your heart. If you call yourself a child of God, live for God. Live for God. 
Don't dwell anywhere, anywhere in fornication. Don't let sexual sins cage you down, trap you down. Trap you down. Don't let anybody deceive you. You know, some, sometimes they will deceive you and say, if you don't have sex and you are there for a long time, you start having this sickness, you start having this disease, let the disease come. Let the sickness come. If God wants you to enjoy sex, God will give you a partner. If God wants you to make it, God will give you a partner. If you think you feel the pain and you cannot control your feeling, pray to God. Lord, I need to settle down. Give me a man that will quench the feeling in me. Give me somebody that will be there for me, that will satisfy me, that I will be pure in your sight. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sexual sins. Sexual indecency. If you are here and you are, you've practiced threesome, in the sight of God, I don't know how to classify you. Go down your knee and cry to God using Psalm 51. Use it for seven days. Seven days fasting, just cry to God. Lord, forgive me. Lord, wash me. W wash me. Wash me. Lord, cleanse me. Seven days fast. With Psalm 51, cry to God. When God created human beings, God did not give two women to Adam at the same time. God did not do that. Even though Solomon, Solomon, Solomon that married 700 wives and 300 concubines, Solomon that had 700 wives and 301 concubines. Solomon never slept with two women on the same bed. It's against God. It's against God. They arrange. This will come and see the king this week. The other one, the next week, not the same bed. You are provoking God. You are pushing God to act on you. You are pushing God to release a curse on you. You are pushing God to release his anger on you. It's not going to be war with you. Many of you marry your dogs and you kiss your dogs in public. You kiss your dog and, and say, God, see, I kiss him. I'm in church. Kill me for me to see. God will not kill you. Because he knew he's still... He's still fanning the fire. The fire that he has prepared for you. The fire is still, is still there. It is, still, it is increasing on a daily basis. When I see lesbians saying, I went to church. Which church did you go? Which church? Which church? Sister, which church? Lesbians. You say, I went to church. And, and they, you hear them say, God, God help me. I mean, which God? There are a lot of God. I want to know which God you people have been calling. Because the God I know, the God that destroys Sodom and Gomorrah for just practicing sexual immorality, the God that scatter a whole nation, that God will not answer you. The fact that things are going on well with you doesn't mean God is on your side. I must tell you the truth. The fact that you are able, you are having children, you are adopting children, you get pregnant and give birth, doesn't mean God is, God is support, in support of your nonsense. God doesn't support. God doesn't support. And it takes some people like us to tell you the mind of God. It takes entities like us. Something like us. We that you don't, you don't respect. You that you think we are outcasts. You that you think we, have, we, 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 we amount to nothing. We will tell you the mind of God. We will tell you the truth. Your pastor cannot tell because you are using money to influence him. Your pastor cannot tell because your pastor is money conscious. He's not so conscious. Your pastor cannot tell you the truth. Me, if you come to me, two women, hey, and say, Mama Lioness, we are before you. We are couples. I will ask you, which couples is that? Which couples be that? Two women, couples. I will let you do it in myself for me to see. I will let you do it. After you finish, I ask you questions. How did you do it? How come? How come? Me, if you are lesbian, can attend my church? That day, I will preach and you walk out. You will feel bad and bad and bad and walk out. Let me tell you what some pastors are doing now. A lot of people want to give me invitation to come and preach in their churches. I have been turning down so many invitations. 
The reason being that I will not let you write a script for me to come and read to your church members. No. If you will not allow the Holy Spirit to use me to rebuke them, don't invite me. Recently, there was an invitation. I honored the invitation because I wanted to know how it all contains. Because it's not the first time. And they've written, the, it's, it's like a whole script that I'm going to act. When I finish reading what they want me to come and do in the church, though they are giving me huge amount of money, the money they made mention of is not a small money. It's a huge amount of money. Ask Mama. I told Mama I'm not going. I told my mom I'm not going. Because I'm not an actress. I'm a preacher. I'm somebody that is used by the Holy Spirit. So if you will not let me come and preach what the Holy Spirit wants me to do, and you want me to come and act. I'm not an actress. I'm not an actress. And I don't in accept invitation where they will not allow me to come and preach. Come and tell the people the mind of God. I will not come. That is why you, do, you see me, I don't go anywhere. Not that they don't invite me. Or they invite me. They want the prophetic gift. Come and prophesy because they will get money. Me, I will not come and use the prophetic gift. I want to use the apostolic gift. To come and preach, tell the people the mind of God, tell people what they need to hear. So, if you, you think if you have in mind to book me, me when you book me, I don't take pe penny, I will not tell you, I will, I will, I will take this. You have to do this, even if it's you in your room, or even if in the church that you put my dress there, I will come and sleep there, and preach, and return back. I don't take any money, but you cannot write a script for me. That is me. You will not write a script for me to come and read. You are inviting me. You've already written programs of the church members. You want me to come and start prophesying so that you use me as a means from, for escorting from the vulnerable church members. You think I'm a fool? Because of that, you broke me. Huh? You can hit me. You broke me and you are going around. I know you are the one behind all my pages that they are restricting. They are restricting my page. I know. I've seen you. I know you are the one behind it. Because you told me, if this word come out, you make sure I don't, I don't live on the, anywhere on the media. I will disappear from the media. I say this word will come out. And you will still see me on the media. Damn my God, you will die. There, my God, the God I'm saved. I see there him. You see, they've restricted my pages, all my pages, because he knew. He knew. Me, you can't use money to track me. Oh, I am from a low background. The background that I'm from, a low background that we struggle to feed. So now, if I can eat three times a day, it's enough for me. It's enough. If I have a place to lay my head, it's enough. Your pastor cannot tell you the truth because you're using money to influence him. We have let the spirit of mammon rule and the spirit of truth is missing. We are silent the truth and we are exalting. We are lifting lies. We are promoting lies. We are preaching lies. Let's wake up. Sexual sins is taking a lot of souls to hell. If you take the percentage of people that died last year, last year, those that are not sexually sinning, they are few. Few. Because when I look around churches today, churches today, it is dirty. It is not clean at all. It is not neat at all. Please. As I bring the word of God to an end. Let me read a scripture to you in the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Tomorrow the same time, by God's grace, we will meet. Tomorrow the same time, by God's grace, we will meet. Now the children are in school, so I get time to, no noise. They just came in, no noise. I'll get time for us to study the word of God. Romans chapter 12. Verse 1 way. So, so then, my brothers and sisters, because of God's great mercy to us, I appeal to you, offer yourself as a living sacrifice to God. Offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God. 
dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. This is the true worship that you should offer. Do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and is pleasing to him and is perfect. Be not conformed to the standard of this world. Trisome is the standard of this world. Polygamy is the standard of this world. Polyandry, a woman getting married to four men. A woman getting married to six men. Polyandry is the standard of this world. Getting married to your pets. Getting married to your pets is the standard of this world. The Bible said, Do you be not conformed to this world. Be not. Not, not. Not. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Fornicating. Live in fornicating. I don't know. You, you are fornicating. You are calling yourself a child of God. It's a standard of this world. And the standard of this world, we don't obey rules. The standard of this world, we live freely. We don't respect any law. We don't respect any norm. We don't respect any value. We don't have any value. We don't respect any custom. Because our customs are derived from this word of God. We don't respect anything. The standard of this world, marry your, uh, your, your pet. You can do abortion. If you are not ready to have a child, you can have sex. When you have sex and you get pregnant, go and terminate the baby. It is legalized. The standard of this world. It's a being not conformed. To the standard of this world. Do not conform yourself to the standard of this world. But let God transform you. Let God transform you. Let God visit you. Have God in your heart. Have God in your life. Be not conformed to this world. Today if I say I'm preaching, I'll preach the whole day. Be not conformed. Please. Ignore the standard of this world. You can have a child after having your child. Oh, your husband will marry you. No, let the man marry you before you have a child for him. Let him marry you if, he's, if he has the energy, the zeal, the love to make love for you. Let him have that love to, to, to wed you or to engage you or to go and see your family. Let your family handle you to him. Let your family bless you and bless him and bless the union. Don't just pack your things. You take your bag and you move from your father's house so cheap and you go and live with a man. And the man will be abusing you, abusing you, beating you, using you as a trash can, putting trash inside you. No way. Tell those men, enough is enough. In this 21st century, we don't do that. We do not do that. Me, all my daughters, I'm training them. I'm telling them, if a man is not ready to make you complete, never be there. Don't be ready to avail yourself for sex. I've been telling them at a very tender age. Very, very tender age. If both of you are not ready, please, for your salvation's sake, as you are hearing me today, go and do correction. Go and correct the errors. Go and correct some mistakes that you've already done. Go and correct it. Don't go and repeat it. Don't go and remain in it. Go and correct it. Go and speak to your husband. And say, my diary, we've been in this sinful thing for a very long time. It's time we make it perfect. Let's go to the law. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Even some, some, some countries, you don't need any family approval. You just go to the registry courts. You hold your hand and go there. For there is so simple. Over here in Africa, that is very expensive. The father will be demanding, demanding, demanding. That makes it difficult for a lot of young guys to get married. A lot of them, they want to get married. They, they, are, not, they are not happy. They are not happy fornicating. But no money. A lot of them, they have that problem. No money. 
If you are in a place that you can correct it today, as soon as you finish hearing me, please don't go into it again. Correct it. Do your best to correct it. Do your best. Be pure. As I'm seated here, if I die today, I know I'm not fornicating. I, I don't like gossiping about people. I'm not greedy. I'm not selfish. I don't envy anybody. God knows my heart as I'm seated here. My, white, my heart is so white. So I don't fear to die. If you are living in sins, you always fear to die. Because you know after death, it's not going to be peaceful. But if you are ready, you can meet death at anywhere. Me, I don't fear anything. Again, because I have aligned my ways to the ways of God. I'm trying my possible best to live a life that pleases God alone. I don't live to please any man. I don't live to please anybody except God. So if God say, my dear, today I'm taking you to eternity, I say, praise the Lord. I'm moving out of this sinful world to go and have rest. You also prepare yourself. Apostle Paul said, if I die today, I die for Christ. If I die, I die for Christ. If I die today, I know I'm going to receive a crown. You too, when you die today, can you point your hand on your chest that when I die today, I'll get a better place to stay? Are you well assured? Look around you. Put things together. Live for God. May God bless you. My name is Prophetess Gifty Apia from Ghana. God bless you. If you want to bless my ministry, my number is plus 233-257-361810. Plus 233-257-361810. We are located in Ghana, Kumase, Buahon, Sasa, Ofinsu Road. Those that know Kumase, Ofinsu Road, Ofinsu Road. That is where my church is located. God bless you. See you again, God willing, tomorrow as you meet to share the word of God again. I want you to do me a favor as you are logging out. Please do well to share the link. Share this on your timeline. Like somebody will hear the word of God. You will win a soul today. Try to win a soul with this message by sharing to your sisters on WhatsApp, on Messenger, anywhere that you can share the link to them, paste the link and share to them and God will bless you. Love you. I'll see you again, God willing, tomorrow morning, 5 a.m. Ghana time for morning prayers. Love you all. Shalom.